Sounds part of Elite Mastermind group. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Ladies and gentlemen, Shadi QE Laser, and today the Q stands for entrepreneurship. I am a full-time entrepreneur. From the time that my ten toes have touched down on planet Earth, I have been involved in family business, and I help other individuals take the ideas that are in their brain and turn them into business models that help them to be available for the people in moments that matter. I'm tuning in from Maryland, close to Washington, D.C., in the United States. Awesome, awesome. Let's dive into it. Think and Grow Rich. When did you start? How did you start? Oh, Think and Grow Rich came into my life many, many years ago. There was a free public library that had the book, and I would go there uh, during the summer, and I had a, a, a great passion for reading, and I stumbled across the book. It was deep in a bookshelf, and I just started to read. And from there, as we'll discuss, things begin to change. So somewhere in the uh, high school time, maybe around uh, 14, 15 years old. Wow, you are so lucky. Oh, my God. I found it way later in life. But I don't know if, I don't know if it's a good thing to find it at early age. Maybe you won't value it enough. I don't know. I mean, you, you shouldn't wait. You shouldn't go beyond thirty-five. I think. I think you need mm -hmm. to know. The, you need. You need to know the materials because then you'll be able to do a lot more. When initially you read the book, what were a couple of the principles that popped out to you that was very intriguing? Well, I think that the biggest principle that uh, stood out to me was the idea of the mastermind group. Now, uh, to your point. Many of the concepts that were presented earlier in life were fundamentals, meaning I, I understood the different lessons, but later on in life, I began to master them. So the concept that many people join together in the spirit of collaboration and excellence leading to greater success for each individual was something that completely changed my mindset in the beginning because I thought that through your own determination, through your own goal setting, you can reach your goals. But what I understood is that the greats of uh, Napoleon Hill's time, they used the mastermind concept. So I began to think, what about my inner circle, my friends that I played sports with at the time? How can we encourage each other to reach greatness? And that's when the magic began to unfold. Yeah, I don't know if these days you could become an entrepreneur or you could make it big enough uh, in, in our society where you and I think is big enough based on the scale that's going on right now alone. I think it does need collaboration of other individuals, whether that's teamwork, whether it's mastermind. You're going to need the cooperation of other people. And I think learning from their wisdom is also very, very important. Yes, the ability to gain wisdom through the mistakes and collective experiences of others is the fastest way to learn. And we're often taught that hard work and discipline are the ways to succeed. But as I began to succeed on a higher level and got to know some of the top performers within my industry, I realized, I said, wait a minute, they're working in collective groups that are in alignment with their goals, and that's how they succeed on a higher level. I agree with that. I do disagree with some of the gurus, some of the influencers out there, where they say working hard doesn't make it. I think it needs to be working hard, and I think it needs to be working smart, intelligent, efficient. I think it's a combination. But I think at the end of the day, the only way to compete with your competitors is to put in the long hours to make sure that you work harder than anybody else. It, it just makes sense. That doesn't mean work stupid. You could go work construction for 15 hours a day. You'll probably never make it to a millionaire. You know, that doesn't work. that's not what I'm talking about. But I think working hard, listen, whatever I lack in talent and in skill, I make up in by working hard. So if somebody can do it in two hours, but I got to do it in five hours, well, guess what? I'm going, out, I'm going to work for five hours. You might get the same results, but I had to put in five hours. But going into the equation, I'm already giving that to myself that, hey, 
I know where my strengths are, and I know where my weaknesses are. I'm embracing it. I'm gonna go hard because that's what I need to do. So I have this argument at the house with my wife all the time. I need to read a book. It might take like a week, two weeks, three weeks. For her to read a book, it's like three hours. So we have a big. I mean, I gotta, I gotta make up for it. So I got a book in the bathroom. I got a book by the bed rest. I got a book in the car. I got a book in the office. So I'm trying to make up in time that she doesn't have to because she's a fast reader. So um, that's that. Sometimes working hard is the key. But I know you have to work efficient too. Yes, I believe the key word is leverage. Now, when it comes to entrepreneurial success. There is no substitute. The key to success is the ability to show up and do the work, even when your mind, your body, your spirit does not want to deliver those results. So self-discipline is the foundational aspect to success. Now, once you have that dialed in, your self-discipline is great. Now we have to think about what is the fastest way to arrive. And the key word is always leverage. And that's where the mastermind concept comes into play because if you see someone, success leaves clues. And when you see someone who has already traveled down a road that you're looking to undergo and you can borrow their blueprint, their template, and some of the lessons learned, it only allows you to operate and reach that goal much faster. But if you're not willing to take those steps through self-discipline, through continuous action, you will not make it to the finish line. So it's a combination of uh, both viewpoints. So the gurus, in a, in a sense, they have it half right, but to your point, there's leverage and there's discipline that's needed mm -hmm. to form that recipe of continuous success. Yeah, I, I don't know if anybody can make it without a discipline. That should just, I don't think we should have a discussion on discipline. If you don't have your discipline together, I don't know what we can do. I mean, that's just two basics. That's just like, you know, I don't know. That's just too simple. To me, it's like, if you want to become an entrepreneur, you need to know you got to have discipline. It's like giving. Like any book that you read, any any videos you watch online, YouTube, anywhere, that's there. Let me ask you another question. What would be the second important principle that you have utilized so far? Well, the second most important is the power of the subconscious mind. And when you talk about the conscious, now, again, during this time, the I didn't read a lot of uh, psychology books. So I thought that, let's say, what I thought during that moment was the most important thing, the conscious mind driving my actions. I want to do this. But there's often those underlying programs that drive our mindset. And when I started to learn about the subconscious mind and affirmations and its impact on performance, that's when I began to realize that even if I put forth the effort, there's always the limiting beliefs. There's always the, the feelings based on previous failures that are stored away deep within the subconscious mind. And Think and Grow Rich was the very first place that uh, that concept was introduced to me. So I began from Think and Grow Rich to start to form daily affirmations. And most importantly, this is very important, to guide and direct my self-talk. So oftentimes when we say affirmations, that is us at our most positive moment. But where people often say the uh, most damaging self-talk is in the moments, meaning when you make a mistake, you say, well, that's the way it's always been, or why am I such a failure? And what we don't realize is even if we have the most supportive uh, inner circle and mastermind group, it's the language that we say to ourselves in life's peaks and life's valleys that dictate our success, no matter what our conscious effort and action may be. And that's a very, very critical point in terms of what was introduced in Think and Grow Rich and part of my daily success ritual that I keep forward even years later, decades later, after being introduced to the book. Let me ask you my last question. I know you're a busy man. If somebody has not read the book, 
in your opinion, why should they pick up the book? I mean, it's like 10 bucks, man. On Amazon, it's like 10 bucks. You could get a free copy online, download it, but I like physical books. So it's like 10 bucks. Why should somebody invest this 10 bucks in their lives? Very simple. Success leaves clues. And every single self-help book ever written, especially within the 20 to 30 years after Think and Grow Rich, has some element, some pattern, some degree of reference to the original. So if you read and you've been inspired by certain books, it's always important to do your research and go back to the source. And this book was written, it is a study based on the most successful uh, entrepreneurs of that day. Napoleon Hill dedicated his life to studying patterns of success and you will save time you will save effort and you will learn several strategies it's not just a book it is a manual for success throughout life and if you want a manual for success throughout life then you can go to your favorite bookstore or online location and access think and grow rich and unlock the secrets to success from over decades of study i appreciate you taking this time and being with us um definitely want to collaborate with you more uh, i see a, a very very bright future because we always seek out influencers that have been been moved with thinking grow rich because when you start with thinking grow rich a lot of good things happen to you i don't know what it is but it's 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 in the juice so it's uh, definitely very refreshing to see a lot of people in the past 20, 30 years especially that have utilized all of these old school principles that still hold true today. So thank you so much for being here. Looking forward to collaborate with you more. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.